Good day colleagues, I'm Penny Nansamba from Makere University, COVAB, SBLS and Department of BDS. I'm here once again to talk about a second preparatory tip that will help us as we develop our detailed design documents or DDDs. This will enable us to attend the right shop to fast track the transformation of COVAB's programs into online courses on the Macquarie University e-learning environment. This right shop is going to take place on Friday the 29th and Saturday the 30th September. And it's going to be a place away from our routine teaching, our routine meetings, to help us bring our detailed design documents to completion so that we are in a position to be ready to upload them onto the Makerere e-learning environment. So welcome once again. Preparatory tip two is going to consist of the nuts and bolts of the DDD, detailed design document. And in tip two, we are going to look at parts one, two, three, and four out of the eight parts that form the core of this DDD document. So tip two, the nuts and bolts we're going to look at include determining the characteristic of the audience, looking at the intended, the, the course-wide intended learning outcomes, ELOs, aligning topics to the intended learning outcomes that we have generated, and lastly, synthesizing a course outline with logically sequenced course topics. So let's look at part one. I've got the laser pointer. Let's look at part one, determining the characteristics of our target audience. We are trying as much as possible to describe what our course is so that someone surfing looks at it and decides whether to join it or the administrative assistant looks at it and knows where to place it on the Makarere e-learning environment. So we need the name of the institution, the name of the college, COVAB, name of the school, School of Biosecurity, Biotechnical and uh, Lab Sciences, the department, SBLS, the program, which houses the course, which is Masters in Molecular Microbiology, MBS. <coughs> course code, MBS 7219. Course name, Applied Molecular Microbiology. And we can see now it's a course that's going to be taught in the second semester. And the course developers of, I am one of them and I am a coordinator. And we also have other three lecturers on this course assisting me develop it. So just like that, part one is done. No, sorry, part one is not yet done. We need now to describe the audience, our learners who are going to enroll into the course. And from previous experience, uh, we've been expecting about 30 students. The age range, they are master's students, so they're above 20 years, up to retirement age. Level of education, they must be having an undergraduate degree, which is a BSc in Biological Sciences. And they must have commit, uh, completed an initial module taught in the first semester. Molecular Biology, MBS 7113. The gender breakdown from previous experience, we have 60% of the, of the class being male and 40% being female. 
Language of instruction is English and international students are advised to take a course in written and spoken English. Employment status of our target audience. They are working. Some may be working or some might have just completed their undergraduate courses and have not yet got jobs. Socioeconomic status of our learners. I believe some may be low income, some may be salaried, others may be married with children. Geographical location. Since this is a course that is, that is full time, we expect that the students are going to be on the campus. So I'll expect that they will have taken up residency in Kampala, Wakiso, Mukono, or any surrounding districts. So we are not getting course attendants, um, learners who are maybe resident, say, in the U.S. and attending this course. No, they'd have to be present in Kampala. The internet connectivity. We suppose the internet provided by Makere University should be sufficient. And where not possible, the students will substantiate the, for extra bandwidth with regular internet providers like MTN and Airtel. Access to technology. I assume that my students will be possessing a laptop, phone, or even having an internet. Oh, if they don't have these, they should use the facilities in an internet cafe. So just like that, part one is done. We go to part two, the intended learning outcomes, course-wide intended learning outcomes. If you go to the curriculum, You can find that this curriculum was well developed. I found a section where there are the learning objectives or the learning outcomes. And this is what I'm going to extrapolate and take to my DDD. And here they are. Now, sometimes the in course wide intended learning outcomes may not be clear from uh, the curriculum or what is there may not be simple, it may not be applicable, it may not be achievable in a particular time frame. So this right shop provides good opportunity to talk with other people, you, other lecturers you deliver the course with, or other departmental members to try and align the in course-wide intended learning outcomes and make them smart. So again, just like that, part two is done. We're going to part three. We are going to align topics that will be taught in the course to these course-wide intended learning outcomes. So I've gone back to the curriculum and I've been able to get a section where there's are topics that are going to be taught. Content in those topics is uh, given and even we have the delivery mode, mode of delivery. So I'm going to take this list of topics and align them to the course-wide intended learning outcomes. So I go back to the DDD part three, there's a table. I'll put the course-wide intended learning outcomes in the table on the left hand side by the end of this course you should be able to do a b c d if you look at intended learning outcome two by the end of this course you the learner should be able to explain the molecular tools used for studying investigating and detecting microbial and viral agents now, on the right-hand side, I'll align the topics that I obtained from the curriculum to the intended learning outcomes. So this is also a good chance to sit with the other lecturers whom you teach with on this course or other departmental members and see that the topics are well aligned to the intended learning outcomes. You may need to update some of the topics to make them more relevant or 
update some of the intended learning outcomes to make them more relevant. And these changes are going to be taken forward to the next time the curriculum is reviewed. So we're done with part three. We are going to part four. We are going to synthesize a course outline with logically sequenced course topics. The template of the course outline is given in the DDD in part four, it's table three. So we put the course code, we had identified it in part one. Course name, we identified it in part one. Course level, is it taught in first year, second year, third year, fourth year or fifth year? Is it to masters or undergraduates or diploma holders? Is it taught in the first semester or second semester? We need these details. Status, is it an elective or is it compulsory? Credit units, you can get this from the curriculum. Prerequisites, are there some courses which the learner needs to have attended before they come for this course? Are there some topics which they need to have knowledge on before they come to this course? And these are the prerequisites we put in the outline. We put a course justification. Why should the students come and attend this course? In this case, we find that there is a need for knowledge on the current technologies in forensic medicine, animal and plant breeding, drug and vaccine development and diagnostics that are being ac applied currently in the field to solve to solve problems especially in the emerging pandemic uh, threats that we are seeing so we put the course justification we need a short description of the course you can get this from the curriculum or you may have to synthesize one if it's not given. Aims of the course. What will the course enable the learner to do one on completion? Learning outcomes. We got this from part two. Detailed course content. He extrapolated from part three of the DDD. Mode of delivery, you can get it from the curriculum or you can actually update on the methods you're going to use to deliver the course. In this case, you're going to use lectures, educative videos, group presentations, case studies, but you can add field visits and so on as is necessary. Mode of assessment, you can get this for the, from the curriculum learning materials that we're going to use, PowerPoints, YouTube videos, self-evaluation questions, group discussions, reference textbooks, and we need the list of facilitators who are going to be part of the course. Now, this is part four. I'd like you to take you to the study guide that we use, that we're going to generate as part of our DDD and upload on the Macquarie University e-learning platform for the students to use as a learning map. And you'll find most of what we've talked about appears in the study guide. So this is the study guide. It has the name of the institution which we extrapolated in the DDD. The college, school, code of the course, name of this course, and the fact that it's a study guide. Let me make it bigger. And it also has the instructors and the list of those who've developed uh, this study guide or developed the module. So next we have a statement on copyright. If you're going online, we need some copyright. We have a statement from the quality assurance director. We have another statement from the quality assurance director on the measures we're going to take. 
to ensure quality assurance in the course. We have a welcome message that's fundamental. But now we also have to put a course overview with the aims, learning outcomes. So remember that we have got this information in part four of our DDD. So we'll just copy and paste into the learning guide. Grading, again, we have it in part four of our DDD. And let me move a little lower in the study guide. We also have to list the course contents in the study guide. And this we had listed in part four of our DDD. So briefly, you can see the DDD is going to help us populate the materials we need to go online. So this content is not uh, yet complete. I'm hoping to get input from the other lecturers whom we teach this course with when they come for the right shop so that we can uh, populate the, I mean, give more content to the uh, to the um, topics that we have listed in this table so with that let me go back to the presentation so the next time we meet we shall look at constructive alignment of the course and fitting the module topics into the allotted time this is actually part five and part six in the DDD. Thank you for watching and hope to see you when we look at tip three. Thank you.